Hello everyone and welcome back to another L5R streamed match. This time we are doing the World Cup USA versus Hungary. My fellow teammate Bill Jr. versus Hungary's Grabba01. Uh, this will be a Dragon Mirror. However, it is not your typical Dragon deck being brought in by Hungary. No, they're bringing in the new Keeper of Void role, running the Unicorn Splash and three Gaijin Customs to maximize the uptime of their towers at the cost of some of the resilience that the Crab Splash uh, brings you, as well as the Seeker Fate. But you also get that extra influence for all those juicy Unicorn cards, as well as Keeper Initiates, although Grabba decided not to include them. Bill, on the other hand, running a very traditional Crab Splash list. We've all seen this before. Um, some sort of iteration of test. I do believe he did work with my Desire on this deck as well. Being uh, part of Team America makes sense. We're going to get into the game here real quick and uh, switch on over. It does seem as though Bill has decided to use the restroom real quick, but the game will be starting momentarily. Luke bringing up 3 itinerant Philosopher, which is something I noticed before streaming but forgot to mention, yeah. Uh, Grabber running three of this somewhat uh, unlikely card, which I believe discards the Imperial Favor to bow a character with a uh, attachment. So quite strong in the mirror, going to be very relevant this game, in fact. Somewhat of a mirror slayer, perhaps uh, Grabba realizing Unicorn, losing some value in the mirror by not having Pathfinder's Blade to deal with the province route. So running three itinerant philosopher may be his solution to that problem. We'll have to see how it plays out for him. Hey, how's it going? Oh, not bad. Uh, no, I'm just pulling stuff up now. All right, well, it's a Dragon Mirror. Um, Bill running a fairly standard test-like build, and Grabba actually running the new Keeper rule, Keeper Void with a Unicorn Splash, and a few other interesting choices, such as Itinerant Philosopher. So, should be an interesting game. Not your everyday Dragon Mirror. Sorry, I have my, my audio set up, but didn't pull up the decks. Who Who's Grabber playing again? I'm sorry, what? Oh, who's Grabber playing against again? Uh, Bill Jr. Okay.
Okay, yeah, I do have those up now. That, uh, huh. Yeah, Keeper of the Void with Unicorn Splash. That is interesting. Seems as though Bill is disconnected from the game. And uh, that reminds me, I should send you the game's password. So definitely uh, just trying to sort out the game match here and get this thing, get this show on the road. I do believe Bill is back in now. And uh, we're off. So I'll switch the... Uh... So going off looks as though Grandma won the coin flip and chose to go second. Oh, it's an advantage. Uh, right now, the fate for going second just being uh, well worth any sort of disadvantage you might get for uh, not going first on the first turn. Yeah, when well, especially with Dragon, uh, being able to have them attack first into your province lineup is just huge. That's true, although Grabba's province lineup is a little weaker uh, being yeah, a keeper cool. role. We should actually look at his province lineup because I do not believe I memorized it. So just switching over to the decks real quick, he is running Sacred Sanctuary for his air, Ancestral Lands for his earth, that's almost certainly going on the Stronghold, Restoration of Balance, Shameful Display, and Rally to the Cause. So the typical Feast for Famine has been replaced with Rally to the Cause, which is a sizable downgrade. So we go back over to the game, Bill opens with Neaton Master Plus 2 Fate, classic dragon opener. Yeah, which is... Again, huge because now he knows that because he doesn't knows he doesn't have to worry about a feast or famine. Playing him with a bunch of fate is just safe. Yep. Where uh, Grabba starts with a slower start. He did open with an imperial palace, which is very important when you have these itinerant philosophers. And uh, I wasn't sure. I didn't catch on the list whether or not he's running Sumiko, but that's also always a relevant threat if you have it in your deck. But uh, this palace will help him get those itinerant philosophers online, which will be quite big in this matchup. And the Swordsmith, very good value card. Didn't use as much fate on it as uh, I would normally expect, but he's on Unicorn Splash, which is worth noting. So those Swordsmiths are not nearly as safe as they are in the Crab Splash. That's true. Is, I'm just looking at Bill's deck. Uh, it looks like he's not running Assassinate, so he would have been safe putting two or three fate on it. Yeah. Maybe he's saving fate for a later turn. Uh, he did, he's running uh, all those spy glasses and other one cost attachments the unicorn gives you. So, having extra fate to put on your actual Voltron later might be more worthwhile than the swordsmith getting you more cards. Yeah, and he might be afraid of hitting hitting feast and getting uh, having all the fate taken off of his swordsmith. Anyway. Oh right, I should have remembered this. But uh, Bill's deck actually running Upholding Authority, I believe, instead of the Air Province. Let's check it out again. He's got Sacred Sanctuary. Um, looks like he's doing it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He puts the um, he puts Shameful Display on his Stronghold, and now his entire row is just um, stuff he doesn't necessarily have to defend to get value out of. Yeah, that makes sense. But uh, Bill wanted to defend here first so that he can use a Pathfinder's Blade to stand the Neaton Master and then attack without needing to waste one of Neaton Master's potential stands, or rather waste one of the weapons that does them. So he passes his first conflict and uh, asks Grabba to make the first move. So it looks like we're going to have a Finger of Jade come down onto the Neaton Master here. So that cloud in the mind, maybe a bit of a, a bit too soon for Grabba. Probably should have waited. Though I guess if you wait, then you give Bill the first opportunity to stand. So unfortunate that having to play the cloud of the mind right now allows Bill to just use his stronghold and be winning the conflict. Yeah. And I should probably switch the stream back over. My bad, streamers. Is Bill going to draw? Did he draw to a let go? Because that's. 
Uh, the Lekko will be huge here. Um, if he did have it, he wouldn't use it until about right now. We'll yeah. see. But it looks as though he has passed and passed his conflict opportunity, so presumably does not have it. Grabba going to continue to poke around, trying to find the restoration of balance, most likely, here. Uh, Sacred Sanctuary would be an awesome flip, considering Bill did not have a Seal of the Dragon to put on his Meat and Master. So, that reaction to being attacked will do nothing. Finds Feast or Famine instead, though, so if Bill has any conflict character whatsoever, then he can get some value out of this. And the deck does run a uh, lot of conflict characters. There is a Tattooed Wanderer coming in, and that'll let Bill attack right back as well. He was first player, so I think he gave up. Both of oh, you're right. Players. You're right. You're right. Yeah, he did give up both of his complex. Oh, finger trade. So mm -hmm. he'll be able to stop that feast or famine trigger, assuming that that's not let go. And of course, since the cloud of the mind wasn't let go, Bill cer almost certainly doesn't have one. Yeah. Probably one of the most important cards in the matchup for this sort of situation. So feast or famine is going to get broken here. Uh, both players went bait and card neutral on that exchange, but it's definitely a little unfortunate for Bill. And Grab is going to be able to grab at the favor with uh, this Imperial Palace. Yep. You know, where it would have been a tie otherwise. With a dishonored, clouded Neaton Master, I'd say the boards look pretty even right now. Yeah, boards are definitely a little more even. Um, this Neaton Master being dishonored and clouded, not going to give Bill a lot of value, actually. So I yeah. think the board is definitely a little bit more in favor of Grabba, especially given he has an active Imperial Palace. Yeah, and it doesn't have any broken provinces and doesn't even have any revealed, so <clears throat> Bill's going to be attacking blind. Uh, some good plays here. Flip Simiko right after winning the favor. This is going to be huge in this matchup. Bill does not have a Shugenja he can buy, so Cloud the Mind not going to be an option for Bill here. Simiko's going to be a real showstopper, especially with a couple of spyglass. And if uh, if Grandpa does get the spyglass, then it's probably going to stick because Bill's only got this one chance to draw let goes, and he has to decide whether he would want to use them on his master or the spyglass. Uh, absolutely, the spyglasses. Yeah, it's not Especially a close choice. Master's got no faith, and yeah. Well, Grandpa's also running Gaijin Customs, so you absolutely discard any unicorn card you can. Yeah. If you can get rid of all five of them, then then you're in the clear, and those guys in customs are just dead. Yeah. There's a spyglass. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, he passes, so, so no one will let go. No let go. Second spyglass, grab it now on no fate. For the moment. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Um, if he goes ahead military fire, he can dishonor the, the investigator. Mm -hmm. We see Grabba just, uh, just uh, playing cards to play around the restoration of balance. Yeah. Although I can't remember the exact sequence of things, I believe that Spyglass triggers before for restoration of balance? I believe the order is that... Hmm. No, no, it's after. Yeah, because Spyglass is a reaction to the entire conflict declaration step, which, in which includes revealing the province. So, I think restoration triggers first, and the Spyglass will let you draw back up. 
Okay, I thought that might have been one of those weird situations where they're considered to happen simultaneously, and so they go back and forth, choosing whether to trigger either ability, but I might be thinking of something else. Uh, it's been a while since I brushed yeah. up on this rolling, but I remember it vaguely being the Spyglass is a reaction to mm. basically the entire declaration step, because it just requires the character being committed. No, I could be wrong. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe yeah, someone in the chat will know. It's a pretty esoteric uh, interaction. All right, so they are shared reaction windows, so he would have to trigger, he would have to choose whether or not to use the spy glasses. Yeah, so Chen, so because there were eight cards in his hand, it would make sense for him to pass on that trigger and wait to see if the resto gets triggered and then wait to trigger both of his spy glasses afterwards. Yes. So if I were Bill, I think I'd just let this break. Yeah. Well, it looks like he's going to defend with an Eaton Master. Oh, he actually has the Let-Go to discard the Cloud the Mind. So if Grabba has another... Oh, he has a Censure. That'll work as well. Yeah. I was going to say, I, like we were talking about earlier, it does seem like he should have just used the Let-Go on the Spy Glasses. That's going to give so much value to grab over the course of this game. Well, it would have got censured anyway. So yeah, it's yeah. The so same trade happened. <laughs> That's true. Though, um, if you can let go of this cloud and uh, reprieve your Neaton Master, that might be more value in general than the spy glasses. And there's the fire dis uh, dishonor on the investigator. Mm, yep. Oh, the skirmisher is big here. Yeah. Probably yeah, gonna good. just go water. Stand your Neaton Master back stand up. Stand the Master about the Swordsmith, yeah. Yeah. The Swordsmith defends it on its own, though, thanks to the military favor. Yeah. I figure you'd probably go in covert out the Swordsmith so that if he wants to block, he has to do it with Samiko. And then she's bowed, unless he has some sort of stand tech. Grab a poison let go of zone to discard the Pathfinder's Blade. Bill still has five cards. And now Bill's playing down his hand <laughs> in preparation for Resto. Yep. Same dance. Yep. Grabba does have a political life, which will give Bill the first ability, uh, the first opportunity to investigate. And Bill's last province is Sacred Sanctuary. He still hasn't seen a Seal of the Dragon, though. Yeah, I do think he would. He'd have played it if he had it. Oh, and he put ancestral lands in his in his row. That's interesting. Yeah, this attack is to force Sumiko to defend, or potentially let Bill break this province. A bonsai would do it. Um, however, Sumiko can defend, and with the one fate, we can use Gaijin Customs to ready her again. So it may not actually end up costing Grabba anything. The Grabba opts to go for the more aggressive, just not defend. Yeah. And force Bill to have a bonsai. But it looks like he just... He just passed through and... Yep. Uh, so this is going to be a really hard conflict for Bill to defend. It's very likely that... Oh, well, we see another cloud go on to the investigator. It seems very likely that Bill will not be able to defend this last province. Yeah. However, he does have a... Two. He does have a good province to just bounce off of now with the ancestral lands. Grab is not going to get anything from 
defending this. Yeah. Oh, it looks as though it is Sacred Sanctuary on the Stronghold. Oh, so, the Shameful's so gonna makes... be nice here. It's gonna re-honor the Neaton Master. Yeah, and so he might actually have drawn a Seal of the Dragon and just been holding on to it until they were gonna start beating attacks on the Stronghold. Yeah, and Bill decides to leave the Katsuki Investigator at home to give him another conflict, probably Earth. Uh, I think the way he's going to have to win this now is very much an attrition game. But that's hard to do against double spyglass. Yeah, and when you're already down, two profits breaks. Uh, is the third break. Yep. Bill not in a great position. Yeah, about the only good thing you can say for him right now is at least he's first player next turn, so he'll get a conflict before the attack on the stronghold. So Finger of Jade's going to cancel a policy debate here. Alright, so now Bill's going to be able to get a, uh... Oh, the, the Wanderer is really nice here, too. Again, yeah. he'll be able to actually win the ring now, rather than... I don't know, fu uh, uh, futilely attack into Simiko. Yeah, I mean, it's still... I think in this position, he still makes the attack regardless, just because uh, it makes sure that he's the only one who gets a, a fade off a ring next turn, if it's a ring he wants. Yes. Oh, and she has. Her, her grabba yep. has the. Uh... Well, Grabba was winning favor anyways, so this Wanderer trade just uh, keeps um, keeps that 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 statement true and keeps the Earth Ring from triggering. Yeah, and they both have their charm holds, so those are going to wash out here. So. Yep. He decides to leave the Void Ring with the Fate. Which well, unfortunately yeah, because... won't do anything directly next turn. Yeah, and he didn't want to attack Void anyway because uh, because grab his keeper of Void, so he would have been giving him a fate for defending. Yep, that's very true. Got to get used to these new rules. Yeah, I feel like we probably don't have to worry about keeper of Void too much until after Worlds, but, but no, I mean, not clearly typically. grab is doing well with it. So yeah, I will say that Bill has been a little unlucky in this game. I think. I'd agree. But I've also got a safe face for my kinsman. <laughs> so Bill has Mitsu in provinces. Mitsu can do some real work to swing this game back because Void Fist is a card. Mm -hmm. And he sees Yokuni yeah. as well. Yokuni is very good in the mirror. Because, well, he's a big body. He's the biggest body across both decks, and he'll just copy whatever the best character on the board is. Yeah. Opts to go for Mitsu instead. This means yeah, that if Grabo wants to attack, he's going to have to... Uh, or rather, if Grabo wants to take the passing fate, he's only going to have Sumiko as a character. Yeah, if he can void fifth Sumiko, that's going to be huge. Turn off three potential... Or two, well, this round, two conflicts from her would be... And Grappa okay. decides to go all in this turn. Uh, he actually discarded the Imperial Palace. So if he does not secure the break this turn, then Bill has a real opportunity to get back into the game. Yeah, especially if Samiko gets void-fisted. He's, I think it's going to be really hard for Grabba to take the favor with yeah. just the initiate and the philosopher. I do believe that uh, Grabba's also only on two copies of Finger of Chain. That is correct. Yep. Two yeah. copies of Finger of Jade. So he needs the second copy if he wants to prevent the Void Fist, and even then, uh, Mitsu can both. just reuse it. Oh, he, uh, he has both? Yeah. 
Oh, he has. Goes to the disco. I thought he used he used one on Feast for Fame. What did he use the second one on? Um, did he just lose it to an Earthring or something? I think he did lose it to an Earthring. So that's nice for Bill. Uh, we're attacking with Mitsu here. That's because the Stronghold is, of course, Sacred Sanctuary. And this will allow Mitsu to stand up and defend here. And uh, Grabba's defense is practically non-existent, but Simiko looking to come in signals heavy Gaijin customs. Yeah. I'm gonna... so I, I, I think in this case, Grabba can't afford the, the risk of the Void Fist. So I mean, I if, has... if, if Bill has it, he can hawk tattoo Sumiko in. That's true. Or he could wait, he could get the break here, hawk tattoo Mitsu in later. Well, he's going to use Sacred Sanctuary on Mitsu, like 100%. Yeah, that's true. Grabber doesn't have a way to stop that trigger. And he's just letting the conflict go through unopposed. Yep. I'm wondering if Bill's actually going to end up uh, breaking the problems here. Yep, just plays a katana to go for it. Yeah, and Grabba doesn't have much he can do about that. He's not running Miramoto's Fury or... Yeah, Policy Debate conflict. is his restricted list card. Yeah, and the conflict characters he has to... Uh, oh, here we go. So I believe there. Mitsu oh. is currently a 6. Sumiko is currently 6 as well. So we could void this yep. to bow Sumiko and send her home, and that's yep. what we do. And that will pretty much stop anything uh, Grabba can do, because Bill smartly goes for the Water Ring here, giving up the Fate on the uh, Void Ring, just to make sure that the Water Ring isn't an option for Grabba to ready Sumiko later. And this is the beginning of what I said. Now that the Imperial Palace is gone, Bill can win the favor, and then suddenly the game is completely different. Yeah, well, yeah, and that Water Ring's going to bow the Initiate, so all these guys, the Philosopher, for the whole turn, that's... Yep. And while the Phosphor can bow any single target on Bill's side of the board, Togashi Mitsu will be unbowed by the Sacred Sanctuary and can't be bowed by the Itinerant Philosopher. So, Bill plays this turn perfectly. Sets himself up to break two provinces this turn, and deals with Sumiko. Oh. Gaijin Customs, Gaijin Customs. though. Yeah, but if he has another Void Fist, he can still put her back down again. Well, he does yeah. have another Void Fist. He still has Mitsu's ability. Oh, that's true. <laughs> So Mitsu proving to be uh, a real star of the dragon deck, especially the dragon crab deck, now that he is officially available. So it looks like we're going in on it. I do believe we're going to go for a water conflict here. Or not water, void. My apologies. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, just to deny Bill any fate for the rest of the turn, that yep. alone would be huge. Sacred Sanctuary is going to stand Mitsu, and I have to imagine Bill will defend with both. So Bill has to play two cards here. Yep. <laughs> and then he can void the Sumiko out of the conflict again. Uh, that said, Grabba can just use his stronghold, and then Bill needs to have another way to buff Mitsu. Yeah, it seems likely he'd have a Hurricane Fist at this point. But... Uh, hurricane Punch, yes. He has drawn hurricane half his deck. Yeah. And there are three in there. Yep, so he would expect he'd have that. That would get them back to Tide. And he's got his own Stronghold, so if he plays an Attachment, he can get up to. Yeah, sure. Oh, Bill concedes. So I guess he just didn't have the, the means necessary. The one Void Fist was enough. Uh, no way to play out his hand and trigger another Void Fist, it looks like. Wow. So 
So definitely a uh, strong showing from the Unicorn deck. Definitely yeah. surprised me a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I, I would not have put my money on it, but did well here. You know, I, I think there was... Bill, Bill had some bad luck here, but overall, I, I, you know, I think Grabba just played a great game. So. Yeah, I think turn one Palace is the, the real factor of this game. Mm -hmm. Definitely yeah, gave Grabba the favor. favor. He needed to really play a lot of his um, cards that lock down the game, such as Censure, Sumiko, and Itinerant Philosopher. Yeah. I wonder if he balled into that, or if he saw it before the... I mean, either way, it works yeah. out well. Yep. <laughs> awesome game, though. Thanks for yeah. joining me, Jeremy. Thanks oh, for yeah, all thanks. you guys for watching. We'll bring you more World Cup coverage on my channel as well as other channels. Keep an eye on the League Media channel in the Discord server for more World Cup games. Until next time, thanks for watching.